Okay, so it so it begin. Hi, Professor Chiba, shall we begin now? Yes, yes, please. Okay. So good afternoon in Japan and also in Taiwan. Today is my great pleasure to have Professor Hayato Chiba's talk again. This time he will share his uh, very, very useful uh, research about the uh, generalized spectral cell and also applications in synchronization of neurons. And uh, so let's welcome him. Thank you, Javan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. So, uh, in the first first part in this talk, I will give a brief introduction to uh, generalized spectral theory and its applications to uh, dynamical systems theory. The first part, the contents of the first part is partially overlapped with uh, my uh, previous talk in the last February. And the second part, I will give an application to uh, our the dynamics of our neurons in our brain. And uh, we will investigate the uh, uh, dynamics of uh, our brain wave. So uh, let me start. So uh, let's consider a linear operator denoted by A on a Banach space capital X. The spectral set, uh, it is known that the spectral set denoted by a sigma of A plays an important role in many areas of mathematics. So from, for simplicity, we start with a finite dimensional case. So in this case, the operator A is a matrix and all point in the spectral set is just an eigenvalue. It is determined by this eigen equation and V is an associated eigenvector. And this uh, condition is equivalent to the condition that the determinant of lambda minus A is zero. And you know, uh, this condition is equivalent to the fact that the inverse matrix has a singularity at V equal lambda. Then lambda is our eigenvalue. So let's see uh, this inverse, inverse of V minus matrix A. It is the uh, so-called aggregate matrix divided by the determinant. And for finite dimensional case, this is a rational function of a complex number Z. And it has a singularity at an eigenvalue. Yeah. So in this case, the spectrum set is just the set of singularities of this inverse matrix. And this inverse matrix uh, plays an important, uh, important role in my theory. It is called the resolvent of an operator A. So next we consider infinite dimensional case. Let X be a uh, infinite dimensional Banach space and uh, A be a linear operator on X. So as in the uh, finite dimensional case, we define the spectrum set as follows. The set of singularities of the resolvent defined on a complex plane is called the spectrum set. So as I, I have explained, for finite dimensional case, the spectrum set consists of eigenvalue, only eigenvalue. However, however uh, for infinite dimensional case, it may include continuous spectrum and residual spectrum, and it is very difficult to uh, treat this spectra usually. One of the reasons is that uh, a point on the continuous spectrum and the uh, residual spectrum doesn't have an associated eigenvector. So our purpose here is to generalize the concept of the spectrum set to treat problems involving uh, continuous or residual spectrum. The result is called the generalized spectrum theory that I uh, will explain later. So uh, for our motivation, let me show several examples from dynamical system theory that have continuous spectrum or residual spectrum. So uh, the first motivation is the Kuramoto model that I have uh, give a uh, 
talk in the last February in detail. The Kuramoto model is a typical uh, mathematical model for synchronization phenomena. It is given by this uh, system of ordinary differential equation. Here, theta i is an oscillator rotating on a circle, and omega i is a constant called natural frequency. And uh, usually it is drawn from a certain distribution function, g of omega. And uh, usually we assume that g of omega is a Gaussian distribution or a uh, nice distribution function in some sense. And k here is a bifurcation parameter. This is a strength of coupling, coupling strength. So, uh, If k is zero, maybe my slide is stopped. Yes, uh, your slides now stops. Your laser ray pencil stops now. Yeah. yeah anyway, <laughs> let me continue my talk. If uh, the coupling strength k is zero, then the second term disappears. And the oscillators rotate at their own velocity, omega i. And there are no uh, synchronization because if k is zero, there are no interactions. But if k is a positive number, then there are uh, interactions between oscillators. So uh, we expect that if k is larger than some threshold kc, then synchronization occurs. I'm sorry that I cannot use my laser pointer. Now I can see your really... laser pen. Now, now. Yes. Now. Okay. Yes. So if coupling strength K is smaller than threshold KC, mm -hmm. then operators are uniformly distributed on the circle. So the uh, uniform distribution, this is a steady state of the system. This is asymptotically stable. And in order to uh, estimate the, the magnitude of the synchronization, we define the order parameter R. It is defined as the center of mass of oscillators rotating on a circle. This is just the uh, center of mass. So when k is small, uh, uniform distribution is a stable state. And in this case, R, the order parameter, is nearly equal to zero. Sorry, Hayato, I have a question. So yes. This one over n summation of exponential i theta i should be a complex number. So R should yes. be the radius of this complex number, not not equal to, right? Uh, we need a uh, absolute value the right for the right hand side of the definition. It, yes. Please. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Take yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. And if K exceeds a threshold of KC, then the cluster is constructed and a synchronization state occurs. So KC is a transition uh, phase transition point or a bifurcation point. And in this case, the order parameter takes a certain positive number. And uh, by a certain uh, formal calculation, Kuramoto conjectured that at first we assume that the number of oscillators is infinity. Then uh, the original Kuramoto model becomes a certain partial differential equation, written as this uh, yellow pen equation. Roughly, uh, this is the equation of continuity or uh, the conservation law, and law is an unknown function. This is a probability density function for natural, uh, sorry, uh, probability density function for oscillators, and here V is a vector field uh, obtained from the right-hand side of the finite dimensional system. Then the 
uh, conjecture sets that a bifurcation diagram of the order parameter is giving us this picture. This picture sets that if uh, bifurcation parameter k, this is a coupling strength, is smaller than kc, then uh, uniform distribution, desynchronization state is asymptotically stable. While if k exceeds kc, then a cluster is constructed and a synchronized state is stable. We want to uh, prove this conjecture. And the standard way in dynamical system theory to investigate the stability and bifurcation of solutions, uh, standard way is to uh, at first linearize the system around the steady state and investigate the spectrum obtained by the linearization. So for the Kuramoto model, at first we linearize the system around the steady state. And then we obtain a certain linear, linearized linear operator denoted by A. I, I, I omit a concrete expression, but this is a linear operator on the Hilbert space. Then we can show that the spectrum set is the full imaginary axis. There are no eigenvalues, but the spectrum set consists of the continuous spectrum. Further, this continuous spectrum, spectrum lies on the imaginary axis. This means that uh, we cannot obtain uh, any information about stability and bifurcation of the steady state. So the context says that if k is smaller than kc, then uh, the steady, steady state is asymptotically stable. So we expect, we hope that there, there are uh, eigenvalues on the right half plane. However, there are no eigenvalues and all spectra uh, lies on the imaginary axis. So to, to prove this conjecture, we need the generalized spectral theory. Professor Hayato, yes. Hayato, can I ask a question? So now if M is infinity, so formally the, formally the spectrum is the vertical line, then yeah. can can I know the spectrum when n is very large? By very large, the, but finite. Yeah, finite. So, Maybe there are many eigenvalues as surrounding this vertical line. Is this true? Yes. Yes. This is That's true. Right. I think like this picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so finite, when, but very large. When, yes. n ten, when n tends to infinity, these finite many points collapse. Accumulate yeah. in this first. Accumulate. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Same I thing. expect, but uh, I think there are no mathematical proof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just a uh, numerical observation. But if I want to prove such a statement, how can I prove using your generalized spectral theory or are there other approach? I think other approach, but I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Thank you. So uh, next motivation. Let's consider the Laplace operator defined on uh, uh, defined on R n in the dimensional space, and the spectrum of the minus Laplace operator is the uh, positive real axis, and there are no eigenvalues. Mm -hmm. And we want to investigate the spectrum of the minus Laplacian plus certain perturbation. For example, if perturbation is given by a potential function, then the operator A is a Schrodinger operator. Yes. And other uh, application is reaction diffusion equation and so on. So the spectrum of only Laplacian is the positive real axis, but because of the perturbation, the operator A may have uh, non trivial eigenvalues and also generalized eigenvalues. Uh, still, I didn't give a definition of the generalized eigenvalue. But uh, anyway, uh, we can show that for this program, generalized eigenvalue describe, uh, for example, for Schrodinger equations, it is, it is closely related to the tonal effect that uh, I will explain later in detail. And for uh, reaction diffusion equation, it is the generalized eigenvalues are related to zero of Evans function. Evans function is uh, often used to uh, study the stability uh, for reaction diffusion equation.
the third example uh, we consider uh, the dynamics of our new, our neurons in brain and we want to investigate the onset of our brain wave. So uh, for the uh, mathematical model for uh, such a program, the extended data model is proposed by Professor Kotani in Tokyo University. It is defined by this equation. Here, uh, capital V is an unknown function. This is a membrane potential of ice neuron. And this is very co complicated, so I omit. But this second term includes interactions between neurons and the network structure of neurons. In the second part in this in today's talk, I will explain this model in detail. So I will show this this term uh, later. And let mu be a bifurcation parameter. This is included in this second term. Mu represents, uh, roughly speaking, mu is the number of synapses, or in other words, the number of uh, connections between uh, neurons. So we expect that from a physical viewpoint or a biological viewpoint, we expect that if mu is small, mu is small, this means that uh, there are no so many uh, connections between neurons, then there are no brain waves. But mu is sufficiently large, uh, stable brain wave occurs. So for this program, uh, as in the Kuramoto model, we consider uh, the limit uh, n to infinity. This means the number of neurons is very, very large. And we linearize the system around the steady state. Then we, would, we obtain a certain linear operator A. And we can show that the sp spectrum set is, is given by a uh, full imaginary axis and the negative real line. So again, uh, we have a difficulty caused by the continuous spectrum. Hi, 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 So yes. the picture of a spectrum is when you take mu to infinity or finite. Uh, this is the number of neurons is infinity. Ah, number of neurons is infinite. So there's another PDE for this OD yes. system. Yes. I see, I see, I see. And here, what do you mean by brain wave? It's either periodic solution or just long trivial solution. Any long trivial solution? Yeah, pardon? What do you mean by brain wave? It's either brain wave. periodic solution. Brain wave is, uh, we have uh, many, many brain wave called uh, alpha wave, beta wave, gamma wave, and so on. It's a traveling wave, rotating wave, periodic solution, or Periodic, periodic solution. A periodic solution, I see. Yes, later I will show that uh, at a certain value of bifurcation of parameter mu, mm -hmm. the uh, system undergoes a hop bifurcation. Oh, bifurcation, I see. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Clear, thank you. Yeah. The fourth example, we consider the Koopman operator or Peron Fulbenix operator of symbolic dynamical system. One of the uh, most simplest symbolic dynamical system is the full shift of finite type defined as follows. Let omega i be uh, some integers from zero to uh, some integer p, and we consider this sequence of integers, and the set of sequence is called, denoted by this capital sigma uh, called uh, symbol space, and shift of operator is just defined as the left shift of this sequence. For this uh, shift operator, it's group one operator defined on uh, editor space on symbol space is defined by this relation. Where f is a uh, function f is from editor space, sometimes called uh, observation, observa observation. So, and uh, in ergodic theory, it is known that chaotic behavior of this shift operator is equivalent to the existence of continuous spectrum of the Kuhlman operator on the unit circle. And actually for this uh, program, the spectrum of the Kuhlman operator is given by this picture. Here, uh, lambda is one, is an 
eigen, unique eigenvalue, unique uh, simple eigenvalue which correspond to the existence of an invariant measure. And the other point on the unique circle uh, uh, or uh, continuous spectra. So by this statement, this full shift uh, operator have a chaotic behavior. More precisely, it is a weakly mixing state. And uh, that... A question. So this this equivalence is like a. Uh... You have a periodic doubling bifurcation cascading to chaos or something different. Because I mean, how can I interpret that about the continuous spectrum is on the uni uni circle? How can I interpret this? Uh, is, is it like a cascade or periodic doubling bifurcation? Or... Yes, yes, uh, just cascade because uh, it is known that this shift. The dynamics by this shift operator is uh, topologically conjugate with a uh, dynamic dynamical system. Mm. Uh, I should write let A B R. Yes. Some dynamical system on zero one interval defined by uh, like a C. Yes, ten map, ten map. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, of course, yeah. Dynamics of S is topologically conjugate of the iteration of A. Yes. Yeah. So it is chaotic and uh, bifurcation occurs uh, through uh, chaotic behavior occurs through a cascade. But now you take some number to be infinite, right? So this is not mm, a. No. Ah, do you take some number to infinite? No. No. Okay, okay, uh, nice. Okay, okay, I will check your paper. Very interesting. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Nice. So, this system is a dynamical system on zero one interval. So, this is a finite dimensional, of course, one dimensional dynamical system. But we consider it Coop one operator. Yes. This is a dynamics dynamical system on L2 space. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So, we have a continuous paper. I see, I see. For this program, uh, the generalized spectrum is related to the rate of convergence to uh, chaotic behavior, convergence to the uh, mix mixing state. So uh, now I saw four examples from dynamical system theory that involves uh, continuous spectrum. And uh, we want to develop the generalized spectrum theory to treat such a programs. So uh, let uh, H be a Hilbert space and capital A be a linear operator on the Hilbert space and sigma A the spectrum set. And as I have explained, this is the set of singularity of the resolvent operator. Now, and uh, now uh, we want to explain the generalized spectral theory. For this purpose, let capital X be a dense subspace of H such that the topology of X is stronger than that of H. And let X prime be the dual space of X. X prime is a set of uh, continuous linear functional on X. So now we have three topological vector spaces. It is called the Gelfand triplet. Actually, uh, the dual of X, X dual, is larger than H because it is because. Now we assume that X is a dense subspace of H. This is an assumption. And because of our assumptions, taking the dual space, H dual is a dense subspace of X dual. Yes. However, uh, H is a Hilbert space, and it is known that Hilbert space is isomorphic to its own space. Yeah. Okay. So in this manner, we obtain 
Mm -hmm. The set of free spaces. It is called the Gelfand triplet. They are a typical example. Uh, for example, if X test function space is a C infinity function with a compact support, then its dual space is just the definition of the Schwartz distribution. And for example, one and three, example one is a Kuramoto model and three is a brain wave. For these problems, the test, uh, suitable test function space is the set of holomorphic functions. And its dual space is called the set of analytic functionals. And for the second example from uh, Schrodinger equation, one of the typical choice of the test function space is a weighted Lubeck space. Here, weight is defined by uh, some exponential functions. And for example four, this is shift operator. Test function space is a set of polynomials. A suitable choice of the test function space is to find it is uh, rather difficult. We need uh, some experience and uh, try and error. Yes, and here I have a question. So the space X is the domain of your maybe unbounded operator A, such that the A is closed, right? This is yeah. domain of your A, I see. Yes. It's not arbitrary. It's like uh, you need to well design it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yes. Thank you. This is the main theorem in, in our theory. Under uh, suitable assumptions for operator, given operator and uh, test function space. But uh, this assumption is very technical, so let me skip. The assumption for uh, operator A is not so strong. Many operators satisfy th this assumption for, uh, for example, for, I think for many integral operator and differential operator satisfy these assumptions. But assumptions for X may be uh, rather technical. We need to try and whatever. Under some, anyway, uh, under some assumptions, we can show that the resolvent operator of A, if it is regarded as an operator from test function space to its dual space, then the resolvent operator has an analytic continuation beyond the continuous spectrum. So oh, this theorem means that usually an operator A is an, given as an operator on the Hilbert space H originally. So the resolvent operator is also an operator on the Hilbert space H. But if we regard the resolvent as an operator on H, the operator has a singularity on the continuous spectrum by the definition of the spectrum set. The operator diverges as an operator on H. However, if we restrict the domain on the, say, uh, nice function space, and we enlarge the uh, dom uh, range, we restrict the domain and enlarge the range, then uh, continuous spectrum disappears and we have an analytic continuation of the resolvent operator beyond the continuous spectra. Here I, we, have, I have a yeah. question. So this is amazing theory. I really like it. I think the main idea is you you can see a stronger topology of your domain, but you can see a weaker topology in your range or in your core, core domain, right? But yes. they are originally the resolving operator is from H, the here perspective to H. Yes. There are four maybe three, three other, cho other choices. For example, you can consider H to X dual, or yeah. you can consider X to H. But now you can see the, the which is a more, how, so how to say, the more, most advantage one, which is X to X dual. Can you comment the other choices? Like, for example, if I consider H to X dual, does the theory yeah. follow? Uh, not good choice. Uh, it is because, for example, if we regard the operator, for example, operator A as a 
dual space to dual space, or maybe H to X dual? Yes, yes, okay. H to dual space, yes. In this case, the special subset typically all con uh, full complex frame. Mm. The reason is that the dual space is very, very big space. Uh, this implies that the, uh, ah. uh, there are many uh, possibilities for eigenfunctions. No, no, but I can but I consider the solvent operator, not yeah. A itself, but the resolvent operator. I mean, can I study the resolvent operator as the operator from H but to the X dual? Not yeah. X to the X dual. Yes, yeah, it's similar for the resolvent operator. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, let's consider uh, multiplication operator. Just yes. multiplication by x mm -hmm. on R. Then uh, in the Hilbert space, L2 space, this operator has no eigenvalues. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. but but on the dual space, the space of Schwartz distribution, in this case, all points, all complex numbers are eigenvalues. eigenvalues. It is mm -hmm. because in, in the dual space, Dirac delta function included in this space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. So the dual space is very, very big space. So there are uh, many uh, candidates of eigenvector. So typically, all points, all complex numbers becomes uh, eigenvalues and we cannot uh, obtain meaningful information. I see. So that's why you also need to consider smaller domain such yeah. that there are meaningful choices of your resolution. I see. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amazing, really. Hmm. So as I, as you said, uh, to control the strength of topology is important. This is, this topology is stronger than that of H and this is weak. This mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, if the resolvent operator is regarded as an operator from X into X there, then the continuous spectrum becomes a branch cut of the Riemann surface. And this is a, a main definition. Usually, the spectrum set is defined as a set of singularities of the resolvent. Here, uh, we uh, define the generalized spectrum set as the set of singularities of the analytic continuation of the resolvent on its uh, Lima surface. And if it has an associated eigenvector, then it is called the generalized eigenvalue. But uh, usually, the associated eigenvector is exists in the dual space, not in the Hilbert space. Like a uh, Dirac delta function. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, now we are back to our examples. First, first example is the Pramot model. Uh, sorry. No problem. Uh, record that we want to prove this bifurcation on diagram. And the linearized operator have the continuous spectra on the uh, imaginary axis. So we, we want to estimate the dynamics of the linearized system. Usually it is called semigroup. Uh, this is linearized regression of the Kuramoto model. Mm. And it is known that the semigroup is given by the Laplace inversion formula. And the integral path of the Laplace inversion formula is this uh, red vertical line. Mm -hmm. And note that in the integrand, it includes the resolvent operator. And in order to estimate this integral, we, we want to deform this integral path. However, uh, this yellow line, continuous spectrum, all points on the yellow line are singularity of the resolvent. So singularity of the integrand. This means that we cannot deform integral path toward, uh, toward mm. the continuous spectrum. 
Yes. Or uh, similarity of this complex function. Okay. To treat this problem, we employ the uh, generalized spectrum theory. Now, oh, let x be a certain class of holomorphic function. It is again uh, technical, so let me skip the detail. Oh, we can show that the resolvent operator, if it is related as an operator from x into xtr, it has an analytic continuation from the uh, right half plane to the left half plane beyond the continuous spectrum on the imaginary axis. And it has a singularity on the second Riemann seat. Uh, by the definition, it is called the generalized eigenvalue. Let's see this lower picture. Now, uh, the continuous spectrum on the imaginary axis become a uh, branch cut of the Riemann surface. And we have an analytic continuation from the right half plane to the left half plane. And the left half plane consists of uh, two sheets. The first sheet is uh, the original complex plane. Yes. But here uh, we have another sheet, second sheet. And uh, we can deform the integral path of the Laplace inversion formula towards the second Riemann sheet. Because we have an uh, analytic continuation from right to left. Here, a uh, dotted line implies that the integral path lies on the second sheet. Then we find a singularity of the analytic continuation of the resolvent. It is called a uh, generalized eigenvalue. And we can show that it plays a similar role to the usual eigenvalue. This means that in this picture, a uh, generalized eigenvalue lies on the uh, left half plane. It induces an exponential decay of, a li of the linearized solution, sorry, linearized equation. And for the Kramoto model, as the parameter k increases, this generalized eigenvalue moves to the right side. And at a certain value, k equal to kc, it gets across the imaginary axis and go to the uh, right side, right half plane. And on the right half plane, there are no uh, uh, second seat. So this is a usual eigenvalue. And at this point, at this, at this point, a uh, bifurcation occurs. In this manner, uh, the Kuramoto conjecture was proved. Hi, Hayato, I have a question. Yeah. So I am wondering, about the mechanism of the generalized eigenvalues. Because for example, for me, eigenvalue is a kind of uh, uh, oscillation, linear level at the linear level. But now if you consider original here per space, there's no eigenvalue, only a vertical line, the continuous spectrum. But somehow when you consider Gilfan triple, you have this resolvent uh, 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 definition, then somehow new generalized eigenvalue appears. What is the dynamical interpretation of this generalized eigenvalue? I think maybe this is just because of the choice of your functional space, or is it really dynamical related? Uh, yes, as I said, this generalized eigenvalue induces a uh, asymptotic stability of the steady state. Yes, but uh, recall that. Uh, for the gram. But if when it, it goes to the right half plane, it becomes yes, a standard yes. eigenvalue. And yes. you can see it. Is this the reason? The eigenvalue on the right half plane is a usual eigenvalue. Yes. But a general uh, eigenvalue on the left half plane is not a usual eigenvalue, but generalized eigenvalue. Yes. And the associated eigenvector, eigenfunction, is not a usual function, function but a kind of distribution. Yes. Yes. For example, if I have a dynamic system, I have an unstable eigenfunction that you in you matrix near the equilibrium, I can see small oscillations nearby. And this yes. oscillation give me the unstable eigenfunction. I can see this eigenfunction. But now my question is, can I see the generalized eigenfunctions in numerics or in simulation experiments? Uh, 
Can I see them? Yes, uh, I can write down the uh, associated item uh, function. Yes. It's like, like uh, um, uh, the associated item function of the generalizer again value, uh, element of the dual space. This mm -hmm. is uh, roughly some smooth, smooth part plus mm -hmm. the Dirac delta. I see, I see. It's the auto. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dirac, uh, like what Dirac delta uh, behavior corresponds to the cluster of oscillators. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, second example recalls the threading operator. We consider threading operator uh, defined by this one. Here, uh, this is a one dimensional Laplacian plus potential function. And here, a uh, potential function is given by a simple uh, potential wave. And it is known that the spectrum of the operator H is like that. Uh, positive real axis is a continuous spectrum. And because of the uh, potential function, we have eigenvalue on the negative real axis. This is usual eigenvalue. For this operator, again, uh, by a suitable choice of our uh, fund triplet, we can show that uh, the resolvent operator of H have an analytic continuation from the lower half plane to the upper half plane. And the continuous spectrum on the positive real, out, positive real axis becomes a uh, branch cut. So we cut along the continuous spectrum. We cut the uh, complex plane. And we prepare two copies of cut complex plane and glue two copies along the uh, cut line, branch cut. Then we obtain the Riemann surface of the square root. So we have another condition like that. And mm. We, if we pass through this cut, then we move to the second seat and again first seat and so on. And on the second Riemann seat here, we find uh, many, many singularities of the resolvent, this yellow points. They are all uh, generalized eigenvalues. And it is related to that uh, effective time that a particle remains in the uh, potential well. And this is a mathematical uh, treatment of the uh, tonal effect. This means that on the first Riemann, uh, sorry, the usual complex plane, we have eigenvalues here. It corresponds to the uh, quantum particles that are uh, trapped in the potential. So the associated eigenfunction, trading a function is like that. This is a, a ground state. But uh, the generalized eigenvalue on the second Riemann sheet explains the uh, behavior like that. Until a certain time, a quantum particle is trapped in the uh, uh, potential well. But uh, after some time, it goes to go outside the well by the tonal effect and the particle goes to infinity. And more precisely, the imaginary part, say this generalized again value, say A plus IB, the, num the number B is related to the time such that the trapped particle go outside the well. But uh, let me skip detail. Third example is a brain wave, but later I will explain it in detail, so I skip this slide. And fourth example recalls a sixth operator. In this case, uh, Suitable test function space is a space of polynomials. And we can show that 
if the resolvent operator of the Koopman operator is uh, regarded as an operator from x into x real, then we have an analytic continuation of the resolvent from outside the circle to the inside of the circle. And we find uh, infinitely many generalized eigenvalues inside the unit circle. More precisely, we find a generalized eigenvalue. It is given by this formula. Here, uh, fen n equals 0, then lambda 0 equals 1. This is a usual eigenvalue. But other ones are actually generalized eigenvalue. And we have the general, uh, sorry, we have the spectral decomposition given by this equality. Here, mu is uh, any element in the dual space, and lambda n is a generalized eigenvalue, and this psi, psi is a associated generalized eigenfunction. So, uh -oh. for this equation, let's consider the k times composition. Then we have k here. And let's consider the behavior as k to infinity. Then lambda n, which is not zero, goes to, of course, zero. So as k to infinity, the right hand side tends to uh, lambda zero. And psi zero is constant function. So uh, what I would say is only n equals zero remains as k to infinity. So the right hand side converts to some constant. It is related to a uh, to, uh, mixing state. So other generalized again value other than n is zero uh, represents the rate of convergence to chaotic state. So this is the uh, uh, overview of the theory and uh, several applications. And next, uh, in the second part, I will explain the application to brain wave in detail. If you have a question at this stage, please. Yes, so uh, you are asking the audience whether we have questions. Oh. Okay, can I go uh, next topic? Yes, yes, please, 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 yes. So I can just write. So uh, here in this slide, we want to investigate the dynamics of uh, our neurons. This is an introduction to Graham Tomwell, but we have done already, so let me skip. So uh, here, uh, our purpose is to uh, show an application to neural networks, application of the generalized spectrum theory to neural networks. Here, uh, we want to study the existence and stability of gamma wave, gamma oscillations. And uh, it is known that gamma wave is related to humans cognitions and attention. And in this model, uh, we consider a local error of our brain cortex and the number of the number of neurons is about uh, several thousand. And in this talk we consider uh, we only consider uh, inhibitory neurons and including excitatory neurons is now in progress. And since we consider a local error of brain, it is reasonable, reasonable to assume that network structure of neurons is given 
by the egress Rainey random graph with the connection prob probability denoted by t. And we regard it as a bifurcation parameter. So uh, two neurons are connected by synapse with the probability p. This is our network structure. So if p is very, very small, then there are no uh, so many uh, connections between your neurons. But if p is very uh, large, then uh, too many interactions between neurons and uh, we expect uh, uh, some non-trivial dynamical behavior. So uh, let me explain our model. This is a mathematical model of a single neuron. This is so-called GYF model, uh, quadratic integrated firing model. Mm -hmm. Here, V is an unknown function. This is a membrane potential of a single neuron. And other uh, symbol, other notations are all physical constant determined by an uh, experiment. VR is a resting potential, VT is a threshold potential, and so on. And here, uh, I is an input current input of energy from outside. And we assume that it is drawn from a distribution function, like as a Kuramoto model. So anyway, now uh, still we consider only a single neuron. So this is a one-dimensional dynamical system, and it is easy to investigate the dynamics. So let's see this picture. If i is zero, then the right-hand side is a parabola with uh, two root here and here. So they are a uh, fixed point of the dynamical system. VR is stable fixed point. And VT is unstable. So uh, almost all tra trajectory tend to the stable fixed point VR as T to infinity. However, if the input current is larger than some value, then this parabola lies on the upside of the horizontal axis. Then there are no uh, fixed point. And we can show that all solutions goes to plus infinity within a finite time. And we assume that at plus infinity, a neuron gets firing. And the trajectory back to the minus infinity. And again, it, the trajectory of it goes to plus infinity within a finite time and neuron get firing and back to minus infinity and plus infinity and get firing and uh, repeat this motion periodically. This is a, a firing or a bursting of neurons. Uh, mathematically, it is regarded that uh, this type of equation is called the Rickett equation. And it is a unique uh, holomorphic vector field on the Riemann sphere. Here we consider only real variables, so it is a smooth vector field on a uh, circle. So plus infinity, topologically plus infinity and minus infinity are connected and it creates a dynamical system on a circle. So now membrane potential rotates rotate on a circle and at this point, uh, the neuron gets fired. So next, uh, we consider a family of neurons with interactions. Here, capital VI is a membrane potential of ice neurons. And here, uh, we have an interaction term. And this G synaptic is a synaptic conductance. And it is governed by this second differential equation. This is an interaction term. Here, uh, for the second equation, the first term is decaying term. And the second term is uh, just uh, it in explains the uh, interactions between neurons. Here, Tk is a time series at which uh, neuron get firing. 
So this summation means that now we consider the dynamics of ice neuron. I and this first summation, summation about connection means that we consider summation for sorry, summation for other neurons which is connected to ice neurons. And this second summation, summation about firing, implies that if neighboring neurons get firing at time k, tk, then we consider summation about oh, oh, summation of this Dirac delta function. So oh, we consider su summation of firing neuron, which is connected to ice neuron. And as I said in the previous slide, this vector field on the real line is regarded as a uh, vector field on a circle. So there exists a, a coordinate transformation from V to uh, theta. Theta is a like an oscillator on a the circle, then we would in the system of the form. It is rather complicated, but I mean, you don't need to remember. Next, uh, to employ the uh, uh, spectral theory, we consider the continuous limit. Continuous limit means uh, n to infinity. For the first equation, the continuous limit is again uh, given by the equation of continuity, like as the Kuramoto model. Here p is an unknown function. This is a probability density function for uh, theta and i. And v is a vector field coming from this right hand side. Roughly, this is v. And for the second equation, we consider the averaging. Here, uh, we assume that the network structure is given by the l dash random graph. The average of, averaging of this equation, equation is given by this one. Here, the summation about connection is replaced by p times n. Here, capital N is the number of neurons and P is the uh, probability of connection. This means that P times N is the number of edges, number of, uh, in other words, the number of synapses. <coughs> so this summation about connection <coughs> is replaced by this number. And because of the continuous limit, this second summation is replaced by this integral. And let's see the meaning of this integral. Here, uh, V times P is a uh, uh, flux of neurons. Now, infinitely many neurons rotate on the circle. And here, uh, theta equal pi is in the, uh, substituted here. So V times P at theta equal to pi is the flux, flux of neuron passing through theta equal to pi. In the original variable, V, capital V, is plus infinity. At this point, neurons get firing. So this integral is a, a total amount of uh, firing neurons. And here, uh, capital GI is a given distribution function for input current. This is the same role as uh, G of omega in the Kuramoto model. So here, our purpose is to investigate 
this dynamical system. This partial differential equation coupled with this uh, ordinary integral equation. And here, uh, this mu is a bifurcation parameter. As I said, p times n is the number of synapses or number of connections. Or roughly speaking, this is the com complexity of uh, the network structure. But Hayato, you have that n to be infinity. Yeah. Hayato n to be infinity. So mu is infinity, no? Uh, more precisely, I as n to infinity, p mm -hmm. should be zero. However, n times p is a finite value. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I should write p times n be some other notation. Okay. I see, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or something, but... right, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a numerical simulation. If mu is small, the light picture, uh, the free state is stable. But if mu exceeds uh, some bifurcation value, the left picture by a hook bifurcation uh, stable gamma wave appears. Mm. So to investigate bifurcation, uh, this is rather technical slide. At first, we expand a solution in the Fourier series. Here, are p is a known function, and this is uh, we expand our unknown function p as a Fourier series, Fourier uh, series with, res with respect to theta, and let zk be its coefficient. Then uh, here. Uh, we employ the Otto Antonsen method. This method says that the case Fourier coefficient is equal to uh, Z1, first Fourier coefficient, to the power of K, satisfies the system. This means, I mean that D is equal. Exponent K. This is the exact solution of the system. So we can reduce this system OP as a dynamical system only for the first Fourier coefficient T1. Wow. <laughs> but uh, still, the Fourier coefficient Z1 depends on I. So it is still uh, not ordinary differential equation, but a uh, dynamical system on L2 space with a variable i. So this system is a, uh, we regard it as a system on L2 plus L2 plus L2 plus R. And uh, they are not so important, so please ignore it. But note that this capital A is given by this integral. So this is uh, infinite. Uh, just in the uh, infinite dimensional system. And uh, we can show the existence of steady state. Uh, <clears throat> we can show that the steady state uniquely exists. But of course, we cannot write down it explicitly because it has an uh, integral operator. Anyway, we linearize the system around the steady state, and the linearized operator is denoted by T with the parameter mu. And in order to uh, study the stability of the steady state, we calculate the spectrum of the linearized operator T. Then we find that the spectrum set is given by this picture. So the continuous spectrum is a full imaginary axis and negative real line. So as in the Kuramoto model, we cannot uh, detect the dynamics around the steady state by this continuous spectrum. So we employ the generalized spectral theory. This 
this is an overview of generalized spectral theory, but I have already explained, so let me skip. But let's see picture. Now we have continuous spectrum here and here. So as in the Kuramoto model, we have an analytic continuation of the development from right half frame to the left half frame. So we have a branch, branch cut of the Lima surface here, and we have two sheets. But st still, we have another continuous spectrum in the negative real line. We cut the complex frame like that. So uh, the Riemann surface of our program is rather complicated, but let me skip this one. So anyway, uh, now uh, we have the analytic continuation of the resolvent of our linear operator. And on the uh, non-trivial Riemann surface, we uh, find a singularity of the analytic continuation of the resolvent. It is called the uh, generalized again values. By uh, investigate by calculating the position of the generalized again values, uh, we can prove the next theorem. Let's see this picture. This is the motion of generalized again value as mu increases. Then uh, mu equals zero. Mu equals zero means that there are no connections at all. Then. Uh, there are two generalized eigenvalues on the second Riemann sheet, here and here. Uh, in this picture, uh, this red curve is a motion of a generalized eigenvalue as mu increases. And this solid line, solid curve, implies a usual eigenvalue, but this dotted curve implies a generalized eigenvalue. And then mu equals zero, then we have two generalized eigenvalues here. This means that the steady state is asymptotically stable. If mu is sufficiently small, this is state, state bit one. <clears throat> and as mu increases, we can show that under some assumptions, this generalized eigenvalue goes to right side and go go to the right half frame at some point here, here and here. And since uh, they across the imaginary axis, at this moment, a uh, hop bifurcation occurs and a stable uh, periodic state, physically it is a uh, gamma wave brain wave appears at a certain value of mu. This is a second statement. And the last third statement, further mu increases, the eigenvalue turn to the left side. And again, it crosses the imaginary axis, this point, this point. Then uh, again, hop bifurcation occurs and a stable periodic solution disappears. And again, uh, steady states becomes uh, asymptotically stable. So this result means that hop bifurcation occurs at least two times. At the first hop bifurcation, a stable brain, brain wave appears, and the second hop bifurcation, it disappears. Uh, this is a numerical simulation. Here, a uh, distribution function for input current is uh, assumed to be a, this is a Lorentz distribution. And this slide picture, uh, horizontal axis is a bifurcation parameter. And the vertical axis is a magnitude of uh, solutions. And this green curve is a stable steady state. And the red curve is an unstable steady state. And the blue one is a stable periodic orbit, uh, amplitude of the periodic solution. So this picture, uh, this numerical simulation means that if mu is sufficiently small, so there are generalized eigenvalue around here. In this case, uh, steady state is stable, this green curve. And 
about uh, mu is 0 0.18 around here. At this point, the generalized eigenvalue crosses the imaginal axis from left to right, this point and this point. At this point, hop bifurcation occurs and a stable uh, periodic solution, this blue curve, appears. And further, as mu increases, around mu equal 4.7, this point, again, uh, eigenvalue gets across the imaginary axis from right to left at point and this point. Then by the second hop bifurcation, uh, stable period orbit disappears. And again, steady state becomes uh, stable. Will this curve of a spectrum go back? And why yeah. again? Why? It's, it's a difficult question. Okay, mm. just curious. Thank you. So from biological viewpoint, uh, maybe it is related to synaptic pruning in early childhood. It is known that uh, in early, for uh, early, uh, uh, for very small baby, the number of synapses get uh, larger and larger at first. But from uh, the age one or two or three, the number of uh, synapses get smaller and smaller. The number of synapses uh, decrease from the, about age two or three. This means that uh, the network structure of our neurons should be, in some sense, uh, simple. Too many, many synapses, too many, many connections becomes, uh, structure becomes very, very complicated and it is not suitable for uh, uh, calculating some information. I, I, my English is not so good, so <laughs> I cannot explain. Clear, clear. Thank uh, you. So anyway, this uh, result states that for the existence of stable brain wave, the number of synapses should be in the, uh, should be, should uh, take an uh, intermediate value of a bifurcation parameter. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the main result. Uh, this is last slide. Let me give a uh, part of a uh, proof of the idea of this result. So at first, suppose that the distribution function for input current is a Dirac delta function. So, Dirac delta means that this is an input current, maybe a difference. Input current, but the distribution for capital I is a Dirac delta. This means that uh, this is uh, some common number, say I. In this case, if this is a Dirac delta, then this integral disappears. And actually, this system becomes a three-dimensional dynamical system not on the uh, infinite dimensional space. So uh, I mean that if we assume that g of omega, sorry, g i is the Dirac delta function, then the system is not infinite dimensional dynamical system, but three dimensional dynamical system. So of course, uh, the identification is given by zero of polynomials. And we can uh, estimate the uh, motion of eigenvalues. The result is this picture. Uh, we have three eigenvalues like that. So here uh, mu is zero. And as mu increases, the eigenvalue move like this picture. This means that for any positive mu, uh, the steady state is unstable because there are eigenvalues on the right half plane. And, uh, Periodic solution is stable. And for uh, any other, uh, for other uh, distribution, 
in this main result, we assume that the variance of uh, distribution function g is sufficiently small. This means that the graph of g is like that. The graph of g has a very high peak and uh, the mountain is very narrow and high peak. And this is, if the variance is sufficient, sufficiently small, this g is regarded as the uh, approximation of the Dirac delta function. Mm -hmm. mm. So uh, for the uh, movement of the eigenvalue, we can use a, a certain perturbation theory. Perturbation, we regard this function as a perturbation from a Dirac delta function. So this picture and yes. this picture is similar. In, in this manner, we can prove the mean result. Thank you. This is difference. Uh, thank you very much. That's all. Thank you. Hayato, thank you very much for giving us indeed two talks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very amazing result. Very deep. So, any question, comment, remarks from the audiences? Just unmute your microphone and, and, and ask, please. Yes, maybe let me begin. Okay, I have a simple question. Today you mentioned, from the very beginning, you mentioned continuous spectrum and also residue spectrum, but it seems to me today in your all of your application, there's no residue spectrum, right? Yes. So just let's see this slide. Yeah, uh, in this third paper, it is not accepted yet. We consider second order Kramoto model. Ah, uh, with inertial turn, right? This is yes, exactly. how Wow, it's a shot. Chen Shuxing, they are happy. And then, yes. We have second derivative. Yes. Plus something. In this program, we find that the spectrum of the linearized operator is this yellow region here. Uh, this is imaginary axis. Yes. And this yellow region is all residual spectrum, residual spectrum. And the imagine, so the vertical line of the real part is still is content is also yellow. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I see. And where is the residue spectrum? This stripe region, all residual spectrum. All residue, but not continuous. Not continuous. Oh, amazing! I see. I see. Okay, interesting. And then you are just. You will generalize the spectral field also apply to this case. Yes, in this case, we have an analytic continuation from right mm -hmm. to this yellow region, and also from this point to this region. I see. Thank you. So, questions? And so, sorry, <laughs> I am so curious about your research. And then in maybe in your brain wave, you assume the capital G of I is symmetric. Yes. I symmetric. think this is maybe important for your living operator to be self-adjoint or not. Is this a very necessary assumption? Can I drop it out? G I is symmetric. Is this really necessary? Uh, I, it is very difficult. I didn't try it for a uh, brain wave, but for Kramoto model, it is known that. For the Kramoto model, uh, we also assume that a uh, distribution function, uh, maybe I back to the Kramoto model. The distribution, we assume that the distribution function is even function. If, like, mm -hmm. like that. That, and your question is that if we drop this assumption, say, like yeah. that, yes. then the motion of eigenvalue becomes very complicated. Yes. 
I mean that if we assume that it is an even function, the motion of eigenvalue or generalized eigenvalue is like that. Yes. And at this point, uh, the system undergoes a pitchfork bifurcation. Yes. But if we uh, drop the assumption of symmetry, assumption of even function, then the eigenvalue may cross the imaginary axis on the not real axis, but some complex point. Is it a pair of a complex eigenvalue or just a single complex eigenvalue? If we have two mountain, then yes. we have pair of complex eigenvalues. Then this so is a whole application, right? Yes, that's yes. right. Yes. Yes. So okay. for if we consider even function, then on a circle, operator create a create a one cluster, rotate so like that. But if we consider a two mountain, then eigenvalue gets across, gets across the imaginary axis like that. Mm -hmm. And because of the hop bifurcation, we have two cluster. Yes, yes, this is also so, This is so-called yes. partial synchronization. Yeah, and they rotate at opposite direction. Mm -hmm. I, see. I see. Thank you very much. Interesting. OK. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, yes. So, um, I have a question, but uh, another question. So, <laughs> there's a standard textbook uh, written by Professor Toshio Kato about perturbation of linear operators. This yes, is I a know. standard perturbation theory. But now, if I want to understand your generalized perturbation, I mean, special theory. Do you recommend any textbook, or I, or, or I can and only read your paper? Or are there good reference textbook for this? I think there are no textbook. Just your paper. <laughs> Just my paper. So you can write a book <laughs> <laughs> about perturbation theory of a generalized setting and. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, because I use Cato's book very heavily. But now, if I want to know this literal like spectral theory, then okay, I can only read your book. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> other questions? Okay, if this is not the case, then let's thank our speaker, Professor Hayato Chiba, again. Thank you.